The man who's high seed rated is an Irish sporting legend. I suddenly thought to myself, here's a guy whose picture was up on my kid's bedroom wall, and all along he was nothing better than a scummy dogfighter. Cavlin gets it off the left foot. Jared Cavlin is a Gaelic football star. A half forward for County Tyrone, he's played in front of 83,000 fans to win the All Ireland final. Gaelic football's version of the FA Cup. Jared Cavlin drives it high. And Jared Cavlin puts Tyrone into the lead. The heavily scarred pit bull seized from Cavlin's house was a Finnish fighting dog called Cannonball. But it wasn't just the capture of Cannonball which excited Stephen Philpott. It was the discovery of dog fighting literature in Cavlin's house. The BBC has been given unique access to the documents discovered in Cavlin's house. They read like a who's who of the dog fighting fraternity. Some of the top fighting gangs in the country are listed here. They have names like Boneyard Kennels, Prize Fighter, and Cavlin's own outfit, the Bulldog Sanctuary Kennels. There were also blow-by-blow -blow accounts of major dog fights in Ireland, the UK and Europe in the last 10 years. Some of the dog fighters are even pictured posing with their pit bulls and children are included in some of the snaps. The material at Jared Cavlin's house showed us that dog fighting was more organized, more lucrative and, and bigger than we had ever, ever thought possible. This was an absolute Aladdin's cave of material for anyone who now wanted to go and investigate dog fighting. And that's exactly what we wanted to do. Clearly, Cavlin had international connections. As we sifted through the box of evidence seized from the football star's home, two names stood out. A Finn called Robert Gonzalez, the man named on Cannonball's pet passport, and Paul Dunkel, the boss of a pit bull breeding business based outside Helsinki. Posing as a couple, Steve, the undercover operative and I, travelled to Finland to investigate the possibility of buying a fighting pit bull from Paul Dunkel. We find his house hidden away at the end of a long lane, surrounded by forest. Hi Paul. Hello. How are you? Dunkel led us on a kennel tour, assuring us his dogs had impeccable fighting credentials. We used secret cameras on this trip, but Dunkel did allow us to use a camcorder. Pit bulls are legal in Finland. Dog fighting is not. Usually we have about 40 dogs here. Yep. And right now I guess the exact count is something like 35 or something like that, more or less. If you are searching for a fighting dog, then I suggest that we do some deal like this, that we test him here before you even talk more. This could be a little bit uh, what you are searching for, a uh, wild, crazy, active, yeah. sporting dog. And he has been in some action. And this is almost a guarantee that it will be something that you are looking for. He's a Tasmanian devil on the lead. Hey, kicks the other dog's ass. Being a Dunkel pit bull can't be much of a life. If you put him in a dog fight, he will probably, no matter if he's in good or bad condition, he will fight from the beginning to the end and probably he will die. As pit bull after pit bull was introduced, it was clear we were standing in the middle of a dog fighting factory. He bites hard and she has good skills from all our dogs. She has the most biting power. It's like a crushing bones ability. Then out of the blue came the link to Cannonball the pit bull seized at Jared Cavlin's home. Dunkel told us he knew Robert Gonzalez, the name on Cannonball's pet passport. In fact, Gonzalez had tested Cannonball against one of Dunkel's pit bulls. Dogfighters call it a roll. Cannonball was 
the first time beaten up about 20 meters down yeah. there. Yeah. And Bobby Gonzalez came with his friends and, and he had a cannonball. It was really in the peak condition. Yeah. And he said, hey, let's take a roll with the cannonball and Taista. I said, hey, what the heck, let's try it. Then we had the roll here and it was really devastating for Bobby Gonzalez. <laughs> No wonder Cannonball was found to be heavily scarred when he was captured by the USPCA. But back to the business of choosing a fighting dog. The most uh, good choices would be, for example, Nipper. Yeah. He's a super dog and he is already rolled. He is a good one. Nipper could be ours for 2,000 euros. Dunkel also offered to export the potentially lethal pit bull. We wanted to test the UK ban on importing dogs bred for fighting. We told Dunkel we'd be back in a few months to buy Nipper. It's been about an hour since we left Dunkel Kennels and I still can't quite believe what I saw in there. Ears off, some of the dogs he showed us he said have been retired because they'd had to have all of their teeth extracted because they got damaged in fights or they had got broken in some of their toys which were these boulders. It was just it was just incredible. Forget boulders. This is what happens when pit bulls use their teeth to chew on a child. This is a patient who was admitted almost a year ago exactly. And she was attacked by a pit bull. There's a sort of a crescent here. Mm. And this crescent represents the bite pattern of the animal with probably a series of bites actually and a series of wounds characterized by tearing in this direction and I can tell you, although it's not possible to do with the picture, that if one were to stick a finger into this wound for example it would come out oh. this wound. Dogfighting was banned in the UK in 1835. But all it did was force dogfighting activity underground. Today, they take place in pits like this. Dogfighting is extremely brutal, but there's a lot more to it than simply forcing two pit bulls into a ring like this one and waiting for them to tear each other to pieces. The orgy of violence unfolds in a highly controlled environment. For instance, each ring must be at least 15 by 15 foot and carpeted. And you've got these marks called scratch lines, which identify each dog's corner. When you hear that a dog has been scratched, it means it's been released from behind these lines to fight. Matches are governed by a strict set of rules. There are 19 in all, and each offers a unique insight into how underground fights are conducted. For years, dogfighters have tried to keep them secret, but this copy was seized during the raid on Gerard Cavlin's house. Take rule five, the pre-match washing of the dogs. It reads like a bizarre ritual. Both dogs to be washed in the same warm water. Both dogs to be rinsed in clean water, taken from the same container. One kennel in particular appears time after time in the match reports found in Cavlin's home. They're one of the most notorious gangs of dogfighters in the UK, indeed in Europe, and they're based here in the town of Tandragee in County Armagh. They're the Farmer's Boys. The Farmer's Boys are absolutely huge. They're massive. They're the Manchester United of the dogfighting world. Anywhere you go, they're talked about with the utmost respect. Over the last 25 years, they have established trading partners in inner city Britain and they're now selling their dogs to those people in those cities. Glasgow, Edinburgh, Manchester, Liverpool, London. This is London and the sort of place where farmers boys dogs can end up. Police seized 21 pit bulls from this house in Northolt last November. Some were described as pit bull royalty in court. And among the paperwork discovered, this pedigree certificate. The farmers' boys, they are like very well known.